I'm always so happy whenever I play Mermails. Is that something that I can admit to? I always just love playing this deck. I'm always down to get wet. Get set to get wet. Hey, what's up guys? Phoenix here, and this video is going to be another Yu-Gi-Oh! combo tutorial video. This time it is going to be an updated Mermail combo tutorial for the new format. This is going to be a six card hand loop uh, tutorial. There are multiple different ways to do it, but this is just going to be one of the pure two card combos that I'm going to be showing you which is Neptabyss plus Mermel Abyss TS. Now you're going to be hand looping your opponent for six cards, utilizing Topologic Gumbar Dragon and Moulin Glacier the Elemental Lord, and you're also going to be extra linking your opponent. So it's a pretty strong, you know, combo as it were. Uh, it's one of those things that Mermels has access into this because of the way the deck operates, um, based around level seven monsters essentially, getting access into number 42 Galaxy Tomahawk and all that sort of stuff. There's multiple different ways to do this as well that are more than two card combos. There's multiple different two card combos that utilize this um, sort of uh, play sequencing. And it uses a lot of your extra deck, but that's fine because Mermails is a deck that if you're going second with it, you could easily just OTK without an extra deck with like double mega low and doing stuff like that. But also because of the nightmares existence, a lot of the cards in your extra deck that you are using for this combo are actually cards that would have had utility in their own right. There's very few cards in your extra deck, extra deck like maybe seven, six or seven of them that are just purely combo enablers and not just like utility cards. But so what I'm going to show you is the Neptubus plus Teus combo in this video. Uh, it is a six card hand loop as I've already said and that's pretty damn impactful in terms of how it would work in a game. Now this is going to be using Summon Sorceress so it is TCG in a category. Uh, there's definitely ways to do this without Summon Sorceress, but they don't really result in easy extra links. You can definitely tweak them to not use Summon Sorceress, but anyway, we'll we'll just we'll address those things as we get into the combo. So for this combo, you're gonna start with normal summoning Neptibus, and you're gonna use Neptibus to send Dragoons to Grave and add a Dragoons to your hand. Pretty standard, right? It should also be noted, I should go ahead and just say that you can do this combo as well with Teus Dragoons. It changes a little bit. But basically, you can still just perform the combo by starting with Dragoons instead of Neptibus. There's also ways to do it with Undyne. Uh, tons of different ways to perform this combo. It's actually kind of scary how consistently Mermails can just literally hand loop you for actually six. But so you're going to discard the Dragoons for the Teus and trigger the Teus' effect. And you're going to get a Gunned to your hand off of the Teus. And off of the Dragoons, you're going to search for a Megalo. Now, because this is the Neptibus Teus route, we're actually not going to be dropping Moulin Glace until very late in the combo sequence. So that's actually very good for us. Uh, it's something that is capable of being enabled by the fact that Summon Sorceress does exist. Uh, in the Dragoons combo sequence, you actually drop it earlier, which means that you usually have to end up linking away with it. But there's an option to not have to link away with it in this combo sequence, and that's what I wanted to show. But so, you're going to make the Neptibus and the Teus into Reproducus. And you are going to use the Reproducus later, but for right now, we're going to reveal Megalo, discarding the Gund and discarding the Neptibus, and they are both going to trigger. Neptibus is going to summon back Dragoons, and the Gund is going to trigger, bringing back the uh, the the Gund is going to trigger, bringing back the Teus, and the Megalo is going to trigger, searching for your Sphere, which is pretty important. Uh, you see that I've got Sekka's Lights in my hand, but that's just because they're you know filler cards. Uh, you can easily play a Sekka's Light build with Sphere in it. Um, you just have to change the combo around to where you're doing the Link Karibo with Neptibus shenanigans to trigger Gumblar on your opponent's uh, draw phase. But if you don't have to use Sekka's Light, you can easily just discard them for the Nightmares in this combo sequence. And you can yield draws off them that way. Like if you open one Sekka's Light and the combo, you can try to perform the combo. And if it works, congrats. You get to discard Sekka's Light, use its Grave Effect. You're not locked out from playing your Sphere. But if you, uh, if you have to activate your Sekka's Light, then you can easily just adjust the combo sequence. But I'll get to that later. So anyway, this is the point we're at. We have the Dragoons under the Reproducus, and we're going to change its type into a Dinosaur so that we can go into Summon Sorcerers with these two, and we have the two level 7s on the field just chilling. So, going to go into Summon Sorceress over here, and then we're going to make the two level 7s into an Xyz monster that honestly I think probably needs to get banned because it is literally Scapegoat turn 1. Galaxy Tomahawk. This card is kind of ridiculous if we were actually being objective. But so you're going to summon your four tokens, literally scapegoating turn one, uh, but it's more consistent than scapegoat because it's an extra deck monster. <laughs> Neat! Uh, but so you've got the summon sorceress up here being a link three. We're going to utilize that aspect of it later, but this is actually super important. This is actually a really cool sequence that I'm going to show you that allows you to sort of just stack up resources in your favor. 
you're going to make Proxy Dragon here because Goblin is no longer with us. It is the new format. Nightmare Goblin is gone. And Nightmare Goblin was a huge part of previous six card hand loops with this deck. But so we're going to link into Proxy Dragon in the center monster zone. And you're specifically linking away with the token that was over here so that you can use Summon Sorceress to summon something to that zone. You're going to activate Summon Sorceress effect, affecting Proxy Dragon. <laughs> oh yeah, I should probably address this. There's two Iblis in my deck, right? That's not because you require two for the combo. You only require one for the combo. But Yu-Gi-Oh! Pro's uh, shuffling system when you're setting up hands for combos where you just don't shuffle the deck is very flawed for presenting combos because if you at any point shuffle cards back into your deck and then draw a card, they just go on top of your deck and you're mandatorily drawing them. So basically I had to put two into the deck just to perform this combo uh, because of the uh, Yu-Gi-Oh! Pro system for shuffling cards back into the deck when you're not shuffling the deck but you only require one, um, if that's not clear. But so you summon the Corruptor, uh, the Corruptor Ibli over here, the Nightmare Corruptor Ibli, off of the Summon Sorceress, targeting Proxy Dragon, and then you're going to link away into Firewall, uh, a card that has dodged yet another ban list. It's almost like Konami doesn't seem to think it's the problem, <laughs> but it definitely enables a lot. There's definitely a lot of broken cards around this card, but this card's definitely broken as well. So you make Firewall here next to Proxy Dragon, and then you're going to use the zone that Firewall opens, and you're going to link into Nightmare Phoenix with a token and the Ibli. So now you're going to give your opponent the Ibli. You are not going to trigger Firewall. Uh, and you're going to summon the Ibli over here. Doesn't matter what zone it goes into. And then from here, you're going to link this last token on your board into Link Spider above the Firewall. Firewall is co-linked with three. So now you're going to activate its effect to bounce three cards. Now you're going to always bounce a Dragoons to your hand and a Neptibus to your hand. Now, what you could bounce otherwise is either another Neptibus, a Megalo, or Teus, or whatever. Uh, it doesn't necessarily matter. I usually just get double Neptibus and one Dragoons. But so now from here, what we have access to is we have access to linking away the Proxy Dragon and the Link Spider into our next combo piece. And that is going to be Nightmare Unicorn. So what we're going to do is link the Link Spider and the Proxy Dragon away into Nightmare Unicorn co-linked with Firewall Dragon, but in the center monster zone. Now, we're not going to trigger Firewall's effect. We are going to trigger the Unicorn's effect. And that is going to discard in this hand, since the Light of Sekas are just filler pieces, we're going to discard that. And this is what I was talking about with Yu-Gi-Oh! Pro System. I'm shuffling the Ibli back into my deck, shuffling and drawing a card, but I draw the Ibli. And even if I were to try and, you know, activate the Light of Sekka to put the Ibli back into my deck and shuffle and draw, it's still the Ibli. So you don't need two to perform the combo. I just had to put two in here for Yu-Gi-Oh! Pro's system to allow me to resolve the combo. Uh, so, anyway, I kind of wish that the card went to the bottom of the deck in Yu-Gi-Oh! Pro system, but I don't understand why it goes to the top. Uh, it just makes this harder than it needs to be, to be honest with you. Uh, but so from wh what we've got access to here is we've got two Nightmares in the Firewall. We're going to link the Nightmare Phoenix away into Nightmare Mermaid above the Firewall. And we're going to trigger Firewall's effect to special and Mermaid's effect to special the Ibli from our deck. So, chain link one Mermaid, chain link two Firewall. It has to be that way. Uh, and so what we're going to be discarding is the Dragoons for Mermaid, because Mermaid's a water monster, so it actually triggers. And then we're going to just special summon the Neptibus over here next to Firewall. Now the Mermaid is going to special summon Ibli next to this, and we're going to draw a card. It does not matter what it is. The Dragoons is going to trigger, and we're going to get the Moulin Glacier. Now, the reason we bounced three waters with Firewall was because we had seven waters in our graveyard, so we did not have anywhere near what we needed for Moulin Glace. By bouncing three, we went down to four. Now, what did we just do? We just discarded one water monster. We discarded the Dragoons. So now we are at exactly five waters. One, two, three, four, and then all the way over here, five, the Dragoons. But, 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 I, I can't special the Moulin Glacia. What gives? It's because this Ibli is on the field. And you can't link away into a link too, because if you did, you'd go to six water monsters. So what you're going to do is you're going to link away the Ibli into another mermaid, just right here, just chilling, <laughs> literally just right here. And then what we're going to do is special summon the Moulin Glacia over here in the far right zone. It's going to trigger. Our opponent is going to discard two random cards. So now from here, we get to transition into the extra link. So what we're going to do is we're going to link away into Nightmare Cerberus with the uh, mermaid and the monster that was summoned next to firewall and make the Cerberus and then we are going to use the firewalls effect to special summon the Neptibus added to our hand off the firewall if you only added one Neptibus you want to save the Neptibus for literally right now so you're going to summon it and then you're going to link the Neptibus as a level one monster into link Karibo above the Cerberus 
And now here is something very interesting. This is a completely self-contained two-card combo. If you want to make Gumblar here, you can easily make Gumblar with the Moulin Glacia and the Unicorn, making Gumblar here right in the center. It's extra linked, you can discard two cards, set sphere, you've done the whole combo. However, you do not get a battle phase next turn, which rarely matters because your opponent is drawing one random card and they still have to deal with being extra linked. But sometimes it can be, you know, a thing. It's just a slight annoyance that you don't want to uh, skip your next battle phase. You want to be able to kill your opponent next turn before they have a chance to draw any cards. So after your draws off Unicorn and Mermaid, if you have any monster in your hand, literally any monster, you can trigger the firewall to special that monster, and then you can link that monster and the unicorn into uh, Gumblar. You don't want to use the firewall here because you want to trigger Gumblar with its uh, with its regular extra linked effect, so that your opponent is forced to discard two cards and not you. And so now you've extra linked your opponent, you've resolved Gumblar, and then all you literally have to do is set sphere, pass your turn to your opponent, activate the sphere in their draw phase, summoning. Lind from deck, and then you're pretty much good to go. The Gumblar is going to trigger, you're going to discard two random cards, and then the opponent is going to also discard two cards. They have zero cards of their name, they have been hand-looped for the full six, uh, and it's it's pretty much game from there. I think you would also agree. <laughs> I, I think you would agree that it's game there, right? You've got an extra link on the field, uh, you've got the Gumblar, you've got the Cerberus giving so battle, or not battle protection, uh, card effect destruction protection in case something does go awry. You've got this just chilling as a beater as well, you're not skipping your next battle phase. And if your opponent ends their turn, and the Lind gets to trigger, you can actually be pretty cheeky if you want to, and summon the Megalo from your deck. And then on your next turn, if you still have the battle phase because, you know, the Moulin Glace didn't leave the field, you could use Megalo to tribute the Mermaid out of your extra monster zone to let Megalo attack twice and also give your stat boost back to uh, back to Moulin Glace and back to Megalo. Because right now they're being decreased by a thousand because of the Mermaid's effect because they're not co-linked because they can't be co-linked because they're not link monsters. But if you want to, if you want to go for game, you could easily break the extra link by tributing the Mermaid and then these go to this goes to 24, this goes back to 28 and the Megalo can attack twice. So this is like several thousand over game like that'd be 28 plus uh 16 plus 3 plus 25 plus 24 plus 24 so that'd be 48 then these this is game by itself and then this is an extra like 6,000 or something like that you get to do like 14,000 damage it's actually kind of ridiculous but so that was the combo i wanted to show you in this video as well as showing you a little bit of the follow-up uh basically i really enjoy playing mermails i really like enjoy the fact that the deck can go second and just being an otk deck with hand traps in it is something that's pretty appealing. It doesn't really rely on the extra deck that heavily, so because you can just easily just drop like double mega low and like equip the equip spells to them and punch for damage. Uh, but there's also like other ways you can you know mess around with it. Your extra deck can literally be just entirely like utility and combo cards, and you can just do stuff like this. Like basically like half of your extra deck is cards that are only used for this combo, but the other parts are also cards like Nightmares, like Unicorn, Phoenix, Firewall, Link, Karibo, stuff like that, that are utility-based cards that you get to utilize uh, because the fact that Nightmares exist and are such dual-purpose cards. So, anyway, that's basically all I wanted to show you for this video. This video, I didn't want it to get too terribly long, so hopefully this is at about an appropriate length. Uh, in the coming days, I may show some more variations like the Dragoon's Neptobisk, or not Dragoon's Neptobisk, Dragoon's uh, Teus combo, how that plays out. Uh, show some of the Undyne combos, because Undyne is also a suitable starter for this sort of strategy. Uh, all that sort of other stuff I could possibly show in the future. But anyway, that's it for this video. As always, guys, thanks for watching. Let me know what your thoughts are in the comments down below. As always, if you want to leave a positive comment or leave a suggestion or whatever, feel free to do so. I may take a look at it, may consider it, may take it on board. Other than that, like the video if you haven't already. Subscribe if you're new here and want to see more awesome Yu-Gi-Oh! content and more combos and stuff like that. And all that sort of other stuff. But like I already said, thanks for watching. Thanks for your time as usual, guys. And take care. I'll see you in the next video.